Beneath the radiant plazas of Cusco, there is a silence that breathes, a rumor carved into stone. For five centuries, people have whispered that a hidden city lies below the visible one, a secret network of tunnels, passageways, and chambers known as Chinkanos places, where you lose yourself. The Incas called the world below, Yuku, Pasha, the inner realm. Tonight, we descend into that world, a journey through myth and memory, through earth and time, to uncover one of the greatest mysteries of the Andes, the underground veins of the Inca capital. This is El Yucu Pasha unveiled, a deep dive into Cusco's underground Chincana network. The first maps of these tunnels weren't drawn with instruments, but with ink and imagination. In the early 1600s, the chronicler Inca Garcilaso de la Vega wrote of underground streets so tangled that even the bravest men feared to enter without a guiding thread. He claimed they connected Sacsayhuaman, the fortress on the hill, with the Cora Concha, the temple of the sun below. It was the perfect legend, holy places, hidden paths, and the unknown. Other chroniclers echoed his words. Fray Martin de Murua, an anonymous Jesuit, all spoke of corridors beneath the bishop's house and the cathedral, as if the sacred empire continued secretly below the colonial city that replaced it. None of them ever saw the tunnels. Yet by writing about them, they made them real, and the myth began to live on paper. As centuries passed, the story grew. Some said the tunnels were filled with gold. Others said they were cursed. Explorers vanished. One legend tells of a single survivor who stumbled out through the wall of a church, thin, terrified, holding a maize cob made of solid gold, and died before he could tell the full story. Whether true or not, the tale worked. It made people fear the earth beneath them, and that fear became a guardian, keeping the tunnels untouched for generations. For the Spanish chroniclers, the Chinconas were merely tunnels, but for the Incas, they were far more. In the Andean worldview, the universe had three layers, Hanan Pasha, the upper world of the gods, K Pasha, the world of the living, and Yuku Pasha, the inner world, the realm of the ancestors, the unborn, and the soil itself. Yuku Pasha was not hell. It was origin, the womb of the earth, Pachamama. Caves were sacred entrances, doors between life and death. To move through a tunnel was to return to the earth's womb, to renew the bond between humans and the cosmos. When the Sapa, Inca, the divine ruler, walked through these underground corridors, it was not transportation, it was ritual, a reenactment of creation. He was the child of the sun, returning to his mother, the earth, to emerge reborn into power. Even the serpent, carved into temple stones, symbolized this journey a creature of the depths, the messenger of Yukupasha. The Spaniards thought they were describing tunnels. In truth, they were mapping the Inca soul. For centuries, the Chinconas belonged to legend, but in the 21st century, that began to change. A new generation of Peruvian archaeologists and geophysicists, led by Jorge Calero Flores and Mildred Fernandez Palomino, launched what they called the Project Chincana. Their mentor, the late Manuel Chavez, Balan, the father of Cusco's archaeology, had once whispered a hint, look beneath the old Inca road between Sacsayhuaman and the Coricancha. That is where the secret lies. So they listened, they searched, they began with sound. 
Every fifty centimeters, a metal plate was struck against the ground, listening for the difference between solid earth and a hollow echo. Then came the machines, ground-penetrating radar, electrical tomography, seismic tests. Waves were sent into the soil. They bounced back, painting a ghostly image of what lay beneath. The results were astonishing. Long, linear cavities appeared on the radar scans, deep underground. Walls of stone, roofs of lintels, patterns too perfect for nature. At last, the myth began to breathe. These were not random caves, but corridors planned and built with intent, and their design revealed a remarkable engineering method, what modern engineers call trench and cover. First, the Incas dug open trenches. They lined the sides with their signature trapezoidal stone walls, shapes that resist earthquakes. They laid huge carved lintels as a roof, then covered everything again with soil, concealing the passage while leaving the surface free for temples, plazas, or roads. Elegant, safe, invisible. One principal axis stretches over a kilometer, linking Saxawaman with the Coraconcha. Branches spread like veins, reaching other sacred sites. If drawn on a map, the network mirrors the sacred geometry of the city above. Cusco was not built on the earth. It was built asterisk through asterisk it. So why would an empire carve a hidden world beneath its capital? The answer lies in function and faith. First, ritual. The tunnels connected to cosmic poles, Sacsayhuaman, the fortress of the sun's power, and Coricancha, the temple of the sun's heart. Moving through that path was an act of devotion. Priests could carry offerings unseen. The Sapa Inca could vanish from one temple and appear in another, a living miracle that reinforced his divine authority. Second, strategy. Cusco was the empire's brain. If invasion came, these corridors could move people, messages, and sacred objects beneath the enemy's gaze. They were escape routes, supply lines, and lines of defense all at once. Third, logistics. In a world where gold was sacred, the Chinkanas protected treasures both spiritual and material, precious textiles, golden effigies, ceremonial objects all could travel safely underground beyond theft or curiosity. A ritual path could also be a secret road. To control the hidden layer of the city was to control perception itself. Today, only two chinkanas are publicly known. The small chinkana, open to tourists, and the great chinkana, sealed and forbidden. The great chinkana, they say, is the true entrance to the lost network. In the 1800s, after several tragic accidents, authorities sealed it with stone. In the 1920s, the military reinforced that seal with dynamite. Since then, the mouth of the tunnel has been closed, a wound hidden in the hillside. Modern archaeologists now stand before it, armed with scanners and drones, but also with caution. Because beneath the romance of exploration lie real dangers, toxic gases, collapsing ceilings, and fragile remains that could vanish the moment they touch open air. To open a world sealed for centuries is to risk destroying it. And so the project Chincana moves slowly, testing, measuring, and negotiating, not only with the earth, but with history, law, and local communities. Science must now learn to dig with diplomacy. Cusco is not alone in its underground dreams. Rome has its catacombs. Turkey has Derinku, a refuge city descending deep underground. Yet the Chinkanas are different. They are not graves or shelters. They are
corridors of living power and network for ceremony, secrecy, and control. The Romans buried faith, the Byzantines hid from fear, the Incas moved through divinity. After five hundred years, the myth of the Chinkana still breathes. Thanks to technology and patience, we now know the legend had truth at its core. Beneath the cobblestones of Cusco, under the cathedrals and plazas, there lies a second city, a masterpiece of stone, silence, and intention. It was built to connect worlds, the visible and the invisible, the human and the divine. Even now, the full story waits in darkness, guarded by rock, time, and respect. Perhaps that is fitting, because some mysteries are not meant to be solved, only understood. When you walk the streets of Cusco, listen carefully. The city hums softly beneath your steps. It is the breath of the earth, the whisper of Yukubasha, reminding us that every legend is only the surface of a deeper truth. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the earth. If you were captivated by this mystery, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more deep dives into the hidden corners of our world. We'll see you next time.